What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and it is time for some more Pokemon theories. We have been going through every region of the Pokemon world covering the best theories that originate from each one of those regions, and today we are going to be covering the sixth region ever introduced into the Pokemon series, the Kalos region. Now, the Kalos region and the 6th generation of Pokemon in particular introduced a lot of really good lore-based things that really change what we know about Pokemon, like Mega Evolution for instance, that really make for a lot of great potential fan theories, and that is exactly what happened with Kalos, and that is exactly what I've got to share with you today. We have got a bunch of really cool Kalos-based theories that originate from a variety of different sources, and honestly, I cannot wait to share them with you guys. Guys. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and just get started. Okay, so this first one is actually a very, very recent one that was made by none other than my very good friend, Birdkeeper Toby. In the last month or so, Birdkeeper Toby uploaded a video onto his channel that detailed a theory that stated that Mel Metal could have actually been the result of the Kalos War that we learned about in Pokemon X and Y. Now, just to give you a fair warning, this theory is fairly detailed and goes over a lot of different points, so in this video I'm going to give you the super summarized version, and then I highly recommend you go check out Toby's video for the full story. But basically, in a nutshell, the theory starts with Melmetal's Pokedex entries, where it states that Melmetal hasn't been seen in 3,000 years. 3,000 years is also the same amount of time in which AZ fired the ultimate weapon during the Kalos War, so the fact that these two particular events have the same amount of time referenced between them is very interesting and one of many similarities in this theory. And believe it or not, the Unova region also factors into this theory as well, because there are a bunch of things in Unova, be it the Abyssal Ruins, be it the Relic Castle, or be it all of the artifacts within the Abyssal Ruins that you can find, that also have an age of around 3,000 years. So it just adds even more weight to the theory that we have all of these things that are basically the same age, and a very random age at that. And this is the part of the theory that I'm going to super summarize, so once again, I highly recommend checking out Toby's video for all the details, but basically it goes that with all of these things being the same age, it's possible that when AZ fired the ultimate weapon during the Kalos War 3000 years ago, it could have possibly landed in Unova, because of course we saw it go all the way up into space, so it could travel a great distance, and when it hit Unova, it actually hit Reversal Mountain, and in turn caused the mountain to explode, which caused the demise of all of those different ruins that we see in Unova that date back to around the same time. And it is from here that Mel Metal originates, because once the laser beam of the ultimate weapon struck Reversal Mountain, the idea is that the laser beam itself kind of mutated some of the molten metal in the volcano, which resulted in Meltan and subsequently Mel Metal as well. We know the ultimate weapon has caused different things like Mega Evolution to occur, and we also know it's caused mutations such as Carbink into Diancie, so this definitely isn't out of the realm of possibility. It's also worth noting that Meltan and Melmetal are made out of Mercury, which comes from the stone Cinnabar on Earth, and obviously we've got Cinnabar Island in the Pokemon world, which is also home to a volcano, so it kind of just fits together very well. And finally, as far as the reason as to why Melmetal is reappearing for the first time in over 3,000 years, we look to the map descriptions of Reversal Mountain itself, one of which, depending on the game you're playing, says that the mountain erupted in a huge explosion a long time ago, whereas the other game's map description says that the mountain has recently been erupting with a lot of smaller eruptions. And going along with the theory, these map descriptions could actually kind of map out what we're talking about here, where the first map description talking about the big eruption a long time ago could have been the eruption that was the result of the Ultimate Weapon and the Kalos War, whereas the other map description that talks about the little more recent eruptions could be the eruptions that caused Meltan and Melmetal to resurface once again after 3,000 years. Now, I will admit that this theory isn't entirely Kalos-based, but the fact that it kind of all originates from the Kalos War, obviously based in Kalos, I felt like qualified it for this list, and it's definitely a great theory as well, so once again, I definitely recommend checking out the full theory on Toby's channel, because it definitely deserves all of the support in the world. 
Okay, so this next one is one that I actually came up with a few years ago, and it was one of the very first Pokemon theories I ever did. Now, I do want to say that I'm not really trying to pat my own back here, putting one of my own theories on a best theory list. As a matter of fact, there weren't really that many crazy, just insane theories from the Kalos region like I was expecting, so I looked back in my own catalog, and this is definitely one of the better, more favorite ones of my own that I've ever made, and even though it actually ended up being not true, I still think it was really fascinating, especially at the time. This theory explored the idea that the player character from Sun and Moon is actually from Kalos, and is also the son and or daughter of Kalem from X and Y, the male player character, and Shauna. And an older version of Shauna is actually your mother in Pokemon Sun and Moon as well. Now, I know that this theory sounds like a classic example of a terrible fanfiction, but it actually does make a lot of sense. First off, if you look at Kalem and you look at the male or even the female player character in Sun and Moon, they have very similar visual similarities, and just by comparing what they look like, it definitely could be the case that the Sun and Moon player characters were the children of Kalem, given how similar that they actually look. Then there was the fact that we knew for certain that the player character had just moved to Alola from another region, making Kalos just as likely as any other region at the time, and at the time there was also very much the thought that Kalos and Generation 6 as a whole was very much unfinished, so it seemed like we had to have something to kind of resolve that storyline, which made this whole idea a distinct possibility when we first saw the Alola region back in 2016. And then the final couple of points that really make this even more convincing is that your mother in Sun and Moon really does look like she could be an older version of Shauna, as they have the same hair color, the same skin tone, and the same signature smile. We also know that Shauna in Pokemon X and Y had somewhat of a romantic or pseudo-romantic relationship with the player character, and then towards the end of the game she actually drops a quote on you where she says that she's going to go to some faraway region, which Alola perfectly fits the description of. Obviously, though, this ended up being completely untrue, and we just got the much more simple storyline that the player character is originally from Kanto, but if I honestly had to choose, I would have much preferred my idea that had the player character being from Kalos, and having them be the son of the player character and Shauna from X and Y, because that obviously would have tied up or at least incorporated Generation 6 a little bit more, and featured it a little bit more instead of making it feel unfinished, and it would have provided a very cool storyline that we have never seen in Pokemon before, and because it made so much sense, even though it wasn't true, I felt like it was worthy of talking about in this video. Now, third up on the list is a rather brief one, but it's also a classic theory that has some Kalos ties, and that would be the idea that Fantina, the gym leader from the Sinnoh region, is actually originally from Kalos. The reason why this has been suggested over the years is because one, we know for sure that Fantina isn't from Sinnoh because she often talks about her home country. And on top of that, she speaks with a noticeable French accent, and of course, Kalos is based on France, so it just seems like a natural no-brainer type of fit. However, there are some naysayers of this theory that will point to the fact that in the Japanese, or as they like to call it, the original version of the game, she actually speaks English rather than French, but it definitely is worth noting that in English, as well as Danish, German, Italian, Portuguese, and the Spanish versions of the game, she has a French accent, and it's only in the Japanese and the French version of the game where she speaks English. In addition to that, though, if you simply take a look at her design and appearance, she much more so looks like she comes from some sort of European-based country, such as France, as opposed to an English-speaking country like Unova, for instance, since that's really the only one, along with Alola, that we have an equivalent of in the Pokémon world. So yeah, even though this theory is pretty simple and to the point and doesn't really have much to it, I personally feel like it's really convincing and cool as well, because I always think it's really awesome when we see characters from one region actually being from another, so that's why I believe it is one of the best Kalos-related theories of all time. 
Coming up next is yet another theory from our guy Bird Keeper Toby because as we all probably know if you are familiar with his channel, he is one of the guys to go to on YouTube for Pokemon theories, so major shout out to you my friend. This theory though actually has to do with another character that originates from another region who is supposedly actually from Kalos, and this time around it would be the trial captain from the Alola region, Mina. The idea here is that Mina is actually originally from Kalos, and it was none other than Alima who actually convinced her to come to Alola to be a trial captain. First off, if we take a look at Mina, she definitely fits the bill of someone who could be from the Kalos region very easily. Number one, she has a very lighter skin tone compared to the locals of the Alola region, indicating that she is not originally from there. On top of that, she has the whole painter aesthetic, which obviously would fit very, very well in the Kalos region, given its European ties, and we even see a bunch of painters and artists in the Kalos region itself in Pokemon X and why as well. And adding on to the evidence, there's also the fact that Mina uses Fairy-type Pokemon, which is a pretty brand new type that was first introduced in the Kalos region in Pokemon X and Y. And if we take a look at the resident Fairy-type city of Kalos, Laver City, there is also a female artist NPC who lives in the city who maybe possibly could be Mina. But then there's the whole Alima side to this theory, like how exactly does he fit into this whole idea? Well, if you do a little bit of snooping around, you can actually go to Alima's house in Haoli City, and through talking to his parents and kind of just investigating his house, you can actually find out that he once went to Kalos to study abroad. And amongst all of the other things that tie Alima to the Kalos region in his house, there's also a painting of the Kalos region right next to his bedroom door, and it could be suffice to say, given Mina's painting background, that she could have given it to Alima as sort of a gift for welcoming her to the Alola region. And last but not least, one more possible connection between the two characters is that in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Alima actually uses a Smeargle on his team, which is obviously a very iconic painter Pokemon. Not only that, but it's also the signature Pokemon of all of the artists in the Kalos region, which we previously speculated that Mina could have been one of, and given the abundance of normal type Pokemon, it seems kind of odd, especially in the early game, that Alima would have a normal Pokemon like this of all the other ones that are available. So I think it stands to reason that this could be evidence of a further connection between the two characters, and maybe, just maybe, this theory is correct and Mina is in fact originally from the Kalos region. And finally, our last theory of the video is from Pokemon Insider, and that would be the idea that the Kalos Pokemon League is actually supportive of Team Flare. Now this might seem kind of crazy at first, but it's not nearly as crazy as you might think. The biggest piece of evidence in favor of this is the Elite Four member Malva. Not only is she a member of the Kalos Pokemon League, but she was once also a member of Team Flare, so there definitely is a bit of an inside man type of thing going on here, even though she supposedly is no longer a member of the evil organization. The other important thing to note here is that the Pokemon League, whether it be gym leaders or Elite Four members or whatever, does not really attempt to stop Team Flare in any way, shape, or form, despite the fact that in most other Pokemon regions, we see at least one member of the Pokemon League doing something to try and stop the evil team of that region. Even Diantha, who is the champion of the Kalos League, and as such is not only the strongest trainer in all of Kalos, but also kind of has a responsibility as such to look over the region and protect it whenever need be, has a friendly relationship with the leader of Team Flare, Lysander, as we see at early points in the game, but even though she has this relationship that she could take advantage of in terms of stopping Team Flare or at least negotiating with them, she does does not attempt to do so in any way, shape, or form, and the fact that the two are chummy in and of itself is also a bit suspicious in terms of thinking that they might actually be supporting Team Flare from behind the scenes. 
events. Usually when we see members of the Pokemon League and the region's evil team interacting with one another, it's because they are fighting and the Pokemon League is trying to stop the evil team. But in this instance, we definitely see a lot of different interactions than what we're used to in terms of the Kalos League and Team Flare. It definitely seems like they're much more closely related than other evil teams and Pokemon Leagues have been, and not in the good way. It definitely kind of at least feels like something more sinister is going on, and that's why I believe this is one of the best Kalos Pokemon theories of all time. And there we have it everybody, those were in my opinion 5 of the best Kalos Pokemon theories of all time. Now, in case you didn't know, Kalos is one of my favorite Pokemon regions ever. I love everything from the story to the region itself, so covering theories from this region specifically was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you guys enjoyed the video though, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below what you think of these theories, or if you have another Kalos-based theory that you would like to share. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and if you're on Spotify, be sure to follow me there as well because any support there supports me here and it's greatly appreciated. With all of that being said though, I will be back on Saturday for another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live. And with all of that being said, I love you guys and I will smell you guys later.